If you're a facilities manager at a warehouse and your HVAC system goes down, it can turn up the heat, literally. But don't sweat it, Granger has you covered. Granger offers over a million industrial grade products for all your operations, including warehouse HVAC maintenance. And even better, they offer access to experts and fast delivery, so you and your warehouse can both keep your cool. Call 1 800 Granger, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. 95.3 WBCK now presents Coach's Corner, live from Lakeview Ford. For over six decades, this has been your number one source for all local sports information. Coach's Corner is proudly presented by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Now, here's your host, Bill Broderick. This is Bill Broderick, sports editor of the Battle Creek Inquirer in the big chair once again on WBCK for another edition of Coach's Corner. Coming to you from downtown Battle Creek at Lakeview Ford on the Motor Mile. For more than 60 years, Coach's Corner has been talking to the city high school coaches about the week in sports. And we will continue to do that as we talk about the big games from last night. And we look ahead to week seven of the high school football season with our first coach of the morning. But first, here is the Lakeview Ford Coach's Corner scoreboard. Last night, Arbor Creek earned a huge win in the Interstate 8 Conference beating league favorite Parma Western 32-13 as the Beavers remain in first place tie with defending champ Hastings, setting up a game for next week, Harbor Creek versus Hastings. That'll be a big one. Battle Creek Central ended a 16-game losing streak and knocked off Gull Lake 54-39. to Penfield lost to Coldwater 28-21. Lori Norris defeated Lakeview 41-22. to and St. Phil will complete the city schedule when it plays tonight at CW Post Field against Colon. In the area, Union City remained undefeated as it is in search for a third straight Big 8 title as the Chargers earned a homecoming win 36-8 over a Bronson team that was tied for first place going in. Marshall lost to Hastings 42-6. to In other scores, Charlotte beat Olivet 14-3. It was Climax over Athens, 65 nothing. Menden, 66. Bellevue, 42. Coloma beat Dalton Kellogg, 41-6. to Saugatuck, 52. Galesburg, Augusta, 14. Homer came up short against Addison, losing 60-22. to Sand Creek beat Mabel Valley, 38-8. Stockbridge beat Quincy, 28-7. We will be back with our first Coach of the Morning after this on WBCK 95.3 FM. Coach's Corner on 95.3 WBCK. Proudly brought to you by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Here's Coach's Corner. Hey, this is Bill Broderick of the Ballot Creek Choir here at Coach's Corner. Here with our first Coach of the Morning, uh, Coach Pacetti of the St. Phil Fighting Tigers. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, Bill. We have St. Phil is going to be in action tonight uh, under the lights at CW, CW Post Field uh, playing Cohen. And that'll be a fun game for everyone to come out for to see the Tigers. Before we get to that game, uh, St. Phil played last Saturday night, and we weren't able to chat about that when we were last met on Coach's Corner. And you guys had your annual rivalry game against Climax Scots, and that's always a fun game to watch with those two teams get together. Uh, in the end, Climax Scots was too much for you guys. They won 66 to 12. You had a little trouble with turnovers and you had, uh, five turnovers in the first half. And St. Phil has, uh, ran into a hot Climax Scots team the last several years. It's their fourth straight win against you guys in eight player football. Let's talk about that game a little bit. Um, Climax Scots is just a real good team and one of the best in the state in eight player football. And, uh, you kind of ran into a buzzsaw a little bit and, uh, and uh, they gave you a little trouble. Well, gave us a lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they are they're a very talented football team. Um, you know, we we come into that game shorthanded to begin with, which really really kind of handcuffed us. You know, we hope hope we hoped to at least get on a field and provide a good game. And with our limitations right now. Uh, it was hard for us to do. You know, we could not run the football against them. And with our injuries, you know, we just don't have speed, you know, the speed that you need to deal with them. Um, 
you know, the, the, the turnovers are going to come because they're going to force them. You know, they, they forced us to become one dimensional on offense and those things are going to happen. You know, they know we're, we have to throw the ball. We could not, we couldn't run the football against them. So we had to throw the ball. So they just got set back, you know, and come after us and force some things to happen. And, you know, that's what good teams do. And they were playing a little zone defense against you uh, with that passing game. And like you said, uh, stuff to run and force you to pass and, um, and, uh, you know, pressure the quarterback a little bit and then make mm-hmm. him throw into space. And they have too many bodies back there to kind of get, get the ball completed. Exactly. You know, I will give our, you know, our kids credit. Our line did a real nice job pass blocking. Um, I, unfortunately, we weren't that good run blocking. Uh, but they did a nice job. You know, they kept Colt up upright most of the night and you know you had to scramble a little bit but it, it's it like i said it's just a good football team and when you're limited like we we have been it, it makes it hard it makes it hard but you know we still had a good night throwing the ball you know i think call through for 260 some yards but it it you can't be that one dimensional they're gonna hurt you yeah he found some spots uh in yeah. that zone a little bit and was throwing Downfield, it wasn't like throwing out in the flat and no. getting some extra no. yards. He was penetrating his own a little bit with some mm-hmm. passes downfield. So that's that's good to see. And um, he's been doing that all year. And 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 you guys are going to be able to pass on a lot of teams. It's just a lot oh. to ask against a St. Phil. I mean, against a climax team. Yeah. Especially yeah. when they're scoring nearly every time they have the ball, and and and, and, yeah. and that and that makes it tough, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It, like I said, they're they're a very very talented team, and they're a very well coached yeah. team. Yep. So, you know, you know, but you want to play teams like that. I say that all along. You know, I just wish you could have, you know, given them a little better competition than what, what the way it turned out. So we turn the page and then, uh, you have, uh, Colin coming to town, uh, tonight. They're <clears throat> struggling a little bit. They have, uh, they haven't won a game yet and they've been outscored 243 to 41 on the year, but they played a challenging schedule. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, that record and the, that, that score, uh, those <laughs> very, scores against them it doesn't really tell the no, story. It's very misleading. Yeah, yeah. they've uh, they've played uh, undefeated teams, at Goals and Menden, as well as they played Climax Scots also, and and that's that's why they they haven't won a game. So talk yeah. to us a little bit about Colin and uh, what kind of challenges they have. They're they're young, but they've got a lot of speed. Uh, I mean, we were we were surprised when we went and saw them. Got a lot of speed, and they've got a freshman quarterback that. If we can't keep him under control, we're going to be in for a long night. Um, he can throw the ball, and he's a good runner. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time this week working on making sure to try to keep him under control. So, like I said, they've got speed. They've got a quarterback, and yeah, they can hurt you. Yeah, Jeremiah West is quarterback, yeah. and he's had a good season so far. And, and like you said, he can throw it and run it. And you guys have, uh, you know, some injuries uh-huh. on the backside, and, yeah. and that, that that can create some issues there in the defensive backfield. And and if Colin can take advantage of that, you guys can be a little bit in trouble. We have one defensive back. Yeah. I mean, we've obviously moved kids around, you know, but it's a football team. You know, step up, we'll, we'll, move the, we'll work together as a team and see see if we can make it happen. Uh, you know, kids are, they're, they're ready. You know, we'll just see. We'll, we'll be playing a lot of inexperienced kids, but that's fine. You know, we're halfway through the season, so it's, it's time to step up and play. Colin's beaten you guys five straight times, so no yeah. one on your roster has, a, has gotten <clears throat> a win against Colin. Nope. A lot of your seniors are, are playing in key roles, and they've been on the team on the varsity for four straight years. How, how hungry are they to, to kind of get some little bit of a revenge against. Kobe. Oh, they would love to get a win tonight. Yeah, yeah they know this is a huge game for us. Uh, we've known it all along coming into the season, but it again, it, it's it's can we can we adapt to the issues that we're dealing with, and can you know we'll, we we will be moving like I said, moving some kids into positions they're not used to playing. How well will they hold up? You know that that's the big issue. But, you know, as far as effort and everything, I expect, you know, we don't expect anything but 100% effort from what we're going to show up and see, try to do the things that we can do best and then try to slow them down on, on offense. At, uh, at three and two going into that game, uh, it's a huge game for you. You're, yeah. you're playing at Menden, 
next week, uh, on, next Friday. So looking forward to that game. That's a tough, tough one for you. But mm-hmm. after that, you have some winnable games after that. Um, looking forward, if you can get a win tonight, and then mm-hmm. you set yourself up to be playing uh, – Playing for a playoff spot going into the final two weeks of the season. So is that top of mind for the kids, you think? Well, that's one thing that we knew all, all year long. That's why this is a big game. We, we knew that f- from the start we saw the schedule that this would be one of, a, a big, huge game for us. And, you know, we've got we've to gotta find a way to win this game. Well, we're looking forward to that tonight. Uh, under the lights uh, on Saturday night, uh, CW Post Field, uh, St. Phil is hosting... Colin, big game for the Tigers uh, to keep them on the road to the playoffs possibly. Thanks a lot for Coach right. coming down. Thanks, uh, Bill. We'll be back with our next Coach of the Morning here on 95.3 FM WBCK. Coach's Corner on WBCK, brought to you by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Now back to the show. This is Bill Broderick here back with Coach's Corner. Uh, we're here with our next Coach of the Morning, Coach Cat Hatton uh, Penfield. He's joining us. Over the phone. Hey, welcome, Coach. How's it going? Good morning, Bill. How are you today? Hey, we're doing fine. Uh, you guys yeah. found yourself in a tussle last night against uh, Coldwater in Interstate 8 Conference play. Uh, the game uh, seemed tight all along. Coldwater came away with a 28-21 to 20 win. 21 win. Uh, tell us about that game and how it kind of started and, and how the momentum kind of changed throughout the game. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh uh, Coldwater came out in uh, an I-formation set and pounded the football against us. Uh, you know, they've been a pretty much a spread team all year and uh, throwing the ball all over the field. And they only threw it eight times last night, ran it over 50. But, uh, you know, our defense did a great job of uh, really holding up and holding our own. Um, you know, they had, you know, big, you know, two big plays. Um, but, you know, we, uh, we bounced back. We scored, and then we scored again. So we were up 14-7, and then uh, – uh, you know, they scored the tie at 14 and then, uh, you know, they onside kicked it twice in a row and got it. And, you know, it was, it was a little frustrating at the moment, but, um, you know, it's something we work on every day. Uh, we work on our onside kick and our hand team and it just, you know, it's just one of those things that the kid made a good play and a couple nice bounces for them. And, uh, you know, they went into halftime 28 out uh, of 14 and came back in the second half and, you know, we, we, we shut them down. Uh, we scored and we had multiple possessions and, couple jives uh, stall out in the red zone that, you know, we just hopefully we can finish up on those. But, you know, it's, again, another thing of, you know, some mental mistakes here and there that, uh, you know, shut down some drives. And, um, you know, we're a young team, and that's that's bound to happen. Yeah, Coldwater has been a throwing team most this year with a young quarterback and a nice young receiver. And when a team uh, throws a curveball at you a little bit there, how long does it take to kind of react to that? It looks like you guys did a really good job to reacting to that, and um, and they asked you to tip your hat to your defense to be able to to, to uh, adjust on the fly. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the first drive that came out and uh, you know caught us off guard a little bit. So we, uh, you know, we had to make some adjustments after that first drive. Um, you know, they they drove the length of the field. You know, they got you know seventy yards on their first drive, and then you know we helped. We ended up holding like one hundred and forty rushing yards total. Um, after that first drive, you know, we really shut them down uh, on the run game. And, um, you know, like I said, they had a couple of big plays that, uh, you know, kind of gave them some momentum. And then, hey, you know, I'll tell you the one thing that I was really proud of our kids was just the resiliency last night. You know, uh, you know, we're really trying to change the culture here. And, um, you know, the thing is, is when you get down, you got to keep fighting and keep responding and keep hitting them back. And, uh, you know, we did that. The second half, we had a couple drives. I mean, we had the ball inside the 10 with a minute left and we couldn't punch it in to, to tie the game up. So, um, you know, and then we, uh, you know, we called timeouts and got the ball back with 10 seconds left and a couple more shots. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't quit fighting and that's something that I was really proud of with our team. And, uh, you know, it's something that is kind of a building block for us. Yeah. After going zero and nine last year, Coldwater has climbed uh, three and three this year and, They've uh, looked like they're on the comeback, so they, they, they're a tough team to handle. You guys look like you ran the ball really well against them last night. Brendan Back had 166 yards rushing and a touchdown yeah. and able to throw the ball a little bit. Calvin Payson's hit Johnny Lake uh, for 21-yard touchdown pass. And uh, moving the ball that way, and then credit to your defense also for, uh, like you said, keeping your, you guys in the game for as long as you did. Gavin May played big again on that side of the ball, 10 tackles, including four tackles for loss, and 
Talk about that defense and, and Gavin May. He's been having a big season for you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, our defense, uh, you know, I thought we've been able, you know, our run defense, especially when teams try to go, you know, uh, double tight power, uh, eye formation stuff, we've been able to hold up. Um, you know, our, our kids are just resilient. Um, you know, we, uh, we really, you know, we focused all week on the past. I'm not going to lie. I mean, that's the cold waters that always been all year. They've been flinging it. And uh, so we spent a lot of time on the past this week. So for them to be able to come or come back and adjust and, hey, focus on the game plan, what we've always been taught, you know, it's nothing we hadn't seen before. Um, but it was, you know, one of those things that it wasn't fresh in our minds. So, um, but you know what? I'll tell you, you know, Gavin Mays having a heck of a year. He's the heart and soul of our defense. And, um, you know, but again, you know, uh, DeAndre Mignolik played out of his mind last night at our outside linebacker. Brevin Bailey had a great game. Johnny Lake, um, that kid started to come into his own as a defensive lineman, um, you know, and, uh, you know, Trevin Strahan played the nose guard for us last night, something he's never done before, um, you know, and Aiden Babbick's really grown into his own as a as a uh, linebacker as well. And, you know, we're, we're young. We got a lot of sophomores and juniors on that on the defense. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, the seniors we do have, they lead, but, you know, our kids are really starting to come into their own. So now we uh, head into the Interstate 8 Conference play again. Uh, next week you're hosting Marshall, and that game, Marshall and Penfield have played a lot of nice games over the years in, in all sports, and especially football, and that's always a fun game to look forward to. Uh, talk about uh, hosting Marshall and what kind of challenges that might bring for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's homecoming week for us, so uh, the excitement's going to be high around Penfield country, and, uh, you know, we got a parade this year for the first time in many years, which I'm excited for, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, Marshall, Coach Farley's got him playing really well. You know, he's a, he's a heck of a football coach. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be, we know they're going to be disciplined. We know they're going to be fundamentally sound. Um, uh, you know, it's another one of those things that, Hey, listen, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't do things that are going to be detrimental to our game. So we got to, you know, make sure we're limiting our penalties, make sure we're not jumping off sides, um, uh, you know, executing, you know, we just got to do what we're taught, you know, and that's the biggest thing is, you know, when, uh, you got a, you got a young team that have never been in these situations, you know, making sure that you trust the system, trust the process. And we're getting there, you know, we're getting there, you know, we're building, we're building great young men here. Um, and that's, you know, trust the process and, and the results will follow. It looks like Marshall will be another team that you're not quite sure what you're going to get from them from week to week because they can both throw the ball and run the ball. They have a Miller there at quarterback at six foot five. He can sling it a little bit, uh, over the top and Akin Olapade has had a great season for them at running back and, and, uh, that's going to keep your defense on the toe on your toes, and uh, it should be a lot of fun for everyone to to look forward to that homecoming at Penfield. Marshall coming to town. Looking forward to a nice big crowd there. Thanks a lot, Coach, for joining us this morning. Be fun. Thank you. We'll be Appreciate back for it. yep. You bet. We'll be back for our next Coach of the Morning here on WBCK ninety five point three FM. Coach's Corner on 95.3 WBCK. Proudly brought to you by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Here's Coach's Corner. This is Bill Broderick back here on Coach's Corner here with our next Coach of the Morning here, Coach, a very happy Coach Lauren Granger. How's it going, Coach? Very good, very good. We're happy this morning because uh, Valkyrie Central beat Gull Lake 54 to 39. <coughs> Valkyrie Central snapped a 16 game losing streak with that win. How sweet is it to talk about a uh, victory this morning on Coach's Corner? Well, it's a lot more fun than the other way, that's for sure. That's right. Uh, you guys came up and lit up the scoreboard. Uh, you had, a uh, you shook some things up, uh, due to some injuries and some other things and, and having had a new quarterback doing some things. And it looks like you found something a little bit. Yeah, I think we did. We, we, um, we've had three kids kind of rotating around at quarterback throughout the season. We lost one of them against Ported Central, LJ. He's just a freshman and, uh, <clears throat> RJ Gray is a junior and he's been, he's taken the majority of our starts really and has done a fairly good job, but it's just, you know, we decided to start Greg Williams this week. He's a sophomore. Um, just give him a shot, you know. Um, we just haven't to date till, till last night found any kind of rhythm at all offensively. And I don't really think it, you know, was any reflection on RJ. He, he does a good job, but you know, we just needed a, a little spark and, and Greg really is 
I consider him a running back. You know, he plays receiver for us right now. Um, but he's really, I mean, his skill set's really running back style. So we just thought, you know, let's try him at quarterback and, and we'll run with him. Um, we've had exchange issues. I mean, we, a week ago, lose to Lloyd Norick six to nothing and, and fumbled the ball several times. Uh, one time going into the end zone, you know, and so we just thought, let's snap it to him and let him be a running back. And, and, uh, so that helped us move the ball and he did a great job stepping into that role. And, and RJ did a great job accepting whatever role he had, you know, in other places. He caught some really key passes last night, uh, as a wide receiver, you know, and that's what, that's what teams, that's what real teams do. They, they accept their role and they do the best they can with it. And I think, you know, those two are examples of kids on our team that, that did that last night and showed to their teammates that when you are willing to, you know, take a back seat maybe to what you want yourself and, and do what's best for the team, it can pay off big for the whole group. And the whole group was hungry for a win. Uh, like we talked about uh, had that losing streak going and, and you and I talked last night about uh, a lot of seniors on this team that were, you know, hoping for a, a big senior season and struggling uh, going through what they've been going through and, and as juniors what they did last year and kind of looking ahead and wondering will they see another win this year? So how big was it for this group of seniors to get a win tonight and to, to be able to end the season strong and, and going forward because uh, now they have some uh, some motivation to keep playing? Yeah, that's a big thing. You know, when they were when they were sophomores, they were all playing on the varsity. I mean, all of the seniors that I have were on the varsity as sophomores. Um, so I don't have very many. But when they were sophomores, they were on a playoff football team, you know, a, a conference championship playing football team. And uh, they haven't won since. And so you get to a point, really, where you, you almost – as a player, because I've experienced this too as a player, you forget what it felt like to have success and to show up every day and go to work and do all the things that coach is demanding of you and, and, you know, listen to all the yelling and the redirection and, you know, quote unquote, believe in the process and, and not have a fair result from the process makes it tough to go to work every day. And, and when you're a senior and your time's winding down, you have an extra sense of urgency about getting some sort of result from all of that. Otherwise, you know, you, you can't help it but feel like, you know, why am I still doing this? And so you could see that on the face of a couple of them, but they did still show up every day and they've they've always, you know, been in fairly good spirits. But, <clears throat> you know, as a coach, you, you sense that, you sense when your guys are are struggling, and they were struggling, and and so to see them enjoying a victory last night, and, I, and maybe the best part was when they're coming up the tunnel and everybody's waiting for them in the concourse, you know, because they they do that whether you win or lose, but the reaction is so much different, you know. The crowd is just there; everybody's cheering, and you could, the smiles on the players' faces were just so huge. And to be able to walk up that tunnel and have that kind of pride again. I think is, you know, that's the best part really for me, right. you know, watching that. It was a back and forth game, uh both offenses really rolling, uh and, which is a little surprising for Gull Lake. They struggled to score, but uh, they seemed to find something to themselves last night and high scoring game at halftime. You Valkyrie Central led twenty eight to twenty three at halftime. Uh didn't quite get a lot of things going in the third quarter, but in the fourth quarter you put twenty points on the board and pulled away and like you said, Greg Williams played quarterback for you. He had two touchdown runs, and he threw two touchdown passes, and he had 133 yards rushing on 17 carries. Capri Richardson had 77 yards rushing in a score. And, and uh, well, you have to help me with the name, uh, Shuford Mandoka. Yeah, Shuford Mandoka. Uh, he had a touchdown Maurice. catch and a kickoff return for a touchdown. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, some nice uh, moments for your whole team and, and on offense where you guys lit up the scoreboard a little bit. Yeah, Maurice ended up in the hospital in the second half. He got sick at halftime and just like, like, I don't know, he started throwing up and shivering and chills and all that. And, um, they ended up, our trainer sent him to 
the hospital to get checked out and severely dehydrated. And well, he went so, to the hospital with a couple touchdowns. So he was, he was a little <laughs> yeah. smile on his face. Yeah, he did have a couple touchdowns, yeah. but you know he didn't play at all in the second half. Um, but in the first half, you know he he had a really good game. He's one of the seniors, you know. So nice to see him get a payout, you know, like I was talking about before. So uh, Valkyrie Central has that win, and then some momentum going into uh, next week. Or are you? Uh, Go on the road and play the longest running rivalry west of the Alleghenies against Kalamazoo Central. Uh, a game that's circled on the calendar for both teams every year. Been playing uh, since before the 1900s. And uh, boy, that game is always a fun game to look forward to. And uh, when Valkyrie Central and Kalamazoo Central play, and you know, anything can happen in that game. Yeah, talk about a save your season opportunity. I mean, that's coming off a win playing a rival like that you know that's one of those games where you win that one and and it's almost like i mean every, nothing ever disappears but you know a lot of your a lot of your pains go away when you beat a, beat a rival like calman's central and so what a great opportunity we have in this next week to you know see if we can pull one off calman's central's got a lot of talent and they you know they're on paper a better team than we are but i believe in what we're doing i believe in our kids and and I think that um, we'll have opportunities to win that game, too. So I we'll look forward to that game. It'll be a lot of fun uh, to do that. Uh, Valkyrie Central plays at Kelms Central next week. Uh, we'll be back with our next Coach of the Morning here after this on WBCK 95.3 FM. Coach's Corner on WBCK, brought to you by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Now back to the show. This is Bill Broderick, sports editor of the Battle Creek Inquirer. Back here at Coach's Corner, we're here with our next coach of the morning, uh, Coach Brett Vernon of the Lakeview Spartans. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Uh, Lakeview fell short last night. Uh, they played Laurie Nark's team and lost 41-22. to uh, But it uh, looks like uh, some th- you had some good things happening for you last night. You guys were uh, a little shorthanded. You lost your starting quarterback, Jack Darlin, uh, to injury from earlier in the year. And... Um, Backup Isaiah Jackson came out and showed you something. He had a little, two, he had two touchdown passes, one to Spencer Shotwell and one to Trevor Wright. Ran around a little bit, made some things happen for you. So Lakeview did lose last night, but maybe they uh, they found something a little bit last night. Yeah, um, to be honest, he's third string quarterback. Okay. Uh, my uh, my backup quarterback uh, hurt his knee in the Kalamazoo Central game. So when you look at you know reps for Isaiah throughout the whole year, they've been very limited. Um, and so uh, you know we were going into the week thinking we still had Jack that was going to be he just wasn't able to go. And so you know it was it was Tuesday when all of a sudden. Game plan needs to change a little bit, um, and you know, just uh, just installing some 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 new new plays that that fit his skill level or his 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 skill uh, uh, attributes a little bit better. Um, he's a he's a mobile quarterback. He uh, he started uh, as as a freshman on the on the freshman team. He was the freshman quarterback last year, um, and he kind of it fits that mold a little bit of a, a Jake Carjack that that we had last year. And so, just kind of dug into that playbook a little bit from what. Uh, uh, we had last year and uh you know um just did a great job I, I just thoroughly impressed with the kid um the way that he was able to take the pressure and uh and, and just create plays you know when when i make a bad play he can sometimes make it right just just by creating and scrambling around and and letting his legs do some magic and and get the ball to a receiver that's open so um no he did great and it was you know two two throwing touchdowns and he had a receiving touchdown off a little trick play there and uh and it was fun to watch him uh do some things and that was the BCK uh, game of the week last night, and Isaiah Jackson was the Lakeview Ford player of the game. So congrats to Isaiah for that. And uh, it got down to a situation where you got down a little bit early and found yourself uh, going. Tell us how that kind of went in the first half and, 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 and how the team kind of stayed in it. Yeah, so I'm not going to lie to you. I was very unhappy with the first half and unhappy with kind of the response from our kids. Um, and... The way we came out at halftime, I was, I, I told the kids at the end that the way we finished the game, the way we came out and battled the second half, just, 
just extremely happy. And that's something I think we can build off uh, and going into the weeks in the future. Um, you got to forget about that first half because, you know, you go into games like that. Lloyd Norris has been traditionally a team that hasn't hasn't won many games. And whether you, you go into that game overconfident or whatever it may be, um, I think kids were a little shocked that the game went the way it went early on and it didn't quite have the response that we needed. Um, but after, you know, getting in at halftime and coming back out, the way that they battled and continued to fight, continued to fight all the way through, uh, I was very happy with, with, with that aspect of the game. Yeah, well, Norris is going through a little bit of resurgence. They beat Valkyrie Central last week and then with their win last night, they, they're up to three and three and in the wide open smack east and anything can happen. They're right there with Kalamazoo Central uh, trying to fight for the title there and, um, now Lakeview uh, goes forward, and you're going to go out of division. You're going to host Stevensville Lakeshore next week. Tell us what you know a little bit about Stevensville Lakeshore so far in the early stages. Um, they love to throw the football. They're they're a team that they're going to go you know five wide. They're spreading it out, and they're going to chuck it. They got some speedsters on on the side. I know they had a freshman last year that played some varsity football, just a fast fast kid, and they're going to try to get the ball in his hands in open space. Hey. <laughs> Struggle all year has been defense for us, and uh, and we got to stop somebody, and we got to find ways to to have great leverage on kids, make our, make tackles when we have chances to make tackles. You know, last in last night's game, I, and Lloyd Norris put the ball on the ground multiple times, and we just didn't come up with the football. Um, it, and that you know that's one of the things that we that I preach is the, when the opportunities in front of us we got to take advantage of the opportunity and there's opportunities on every single play and um, we're just not taking those opportunities right now whether that's a missed tackle whether that's a ball on the ground whether that's a you know a, a tipped ball not getting an interception um, we we got to find a way to step up and, and make those plays. Um, and that'll help our defense a little bit. So yeah, they, they're going to be, they got speed and space. Um, they obviously haven't shown much in the way of the win column this year, but it, it's still a good team. They got some good athletes out there. And it's going to be a tough game. And they're making the long trip from the Lake Michigan all the way into Battle Creek. And, uh, so you have that and that game coming up and, and, and schedule that has Porter Central in after that and at Gull Lake to end the season. So, so how important it is to end strong and to try to get some momentum going for this program. And like you said, you have some young guys still playing at key spots and, and some seniors that are going out. But uh, you want you want to get some momentum at the end of the year and be playing some good football. Very much so. Hey, it's been an adverse year. It's uh, – it- <laughs> it's it's been a struggle at times um and and yes uh finding ways to get some wins at the end giving our kids some confidence is extremely important um you know we want our young kids to know that we want to continue to get better every single day um and, and as, as we build for that future there and we want to send you know seniors obviously out on a high note we want them to you know uh, remember you know the end of the season as as a positive one and uh so hopefully that gets us back to the practice field this week working our butts off and, and having a great week uh, as we go on to Lakeshore. I'm really forward to that. A home game for Lakeview uh, next week. Stevens with Lakeshore coming into town and we'll talk more about that game next Saturday when we meet again in Coach's Corner. Thanks a lot, Coach, for coming in. Appreciate it. We'll be back with our next Coach of the Morning here on WBCK 95.3 FM. Coach's Corner on 95.3 WBCK. Proudly brought to you by Lakeview Ford, where community matters. Here's Coach's Corner. This is Bill Broderick back on Coach's Corner here with our next Coach of the Morning here, Coach Mason Converse of the Harper Creek Beavers. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, Bill. Harper Creek had one of its bigger wins in the regular season the last several years. Uh, they uh, went on the road and beat Parma Western for the first time in four tries, 32 to 13. And uh, what that does is that uh, knocks off Harper, that knocks off Parma Western off the, the top of the standings there and puts Harper Creek up there with Hastings and sets up uh, what would be a league championship game next week in the Interstate 8 Conference. Harbor Creek and Hastings both undefeated in the league with a chance to take the title with the winner. And how big was that win last night for Parma Western against Parma Western and how excited are the kids? Oh, what a great, what a great win for our young man. I'm so happy for our boys and, and, uh, coming off of last week's loss where we knew we played well enough to win, just didn't make the, the plays at critical moments or made some critical mistakes that, uh, that you can't make in games like that and learning from that watching them kind of come together as a team this week and still believe in themselves believe in each other and just watching the difference between last week and this week it was uh it was pretty special to see and um 
you know, one play in particular because it was a defensive battle early on, and one play in particular, they were down. I think they had first and goal on like our three yard line. They had they had gone like a little stutter and go pass, and uh, and Tegan Turnbull made a tackle to keep the to keep the uh, Parma kid out of out of the end zone, and Tegan was really upset with himself for allowing that. And he had good position. The kid made made a good play, and um, and uh, watching DJ Wood. Run all you can actually see it on film. He runs all the way across the field, taps Tegan on the helmet, and of course I don't know what he says, but probably something like, "Hey, we got this. Stick with it. We're, we're going to make this happen." And then they went backwards for three straight plays. Like we 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 tackled him on the sweep, then we uh, then we sacked him. And I think we well they threw an incomplete pass, and then we sacked him on a huge third down. And that goal line stand right there told me, "Okay, we're going to be okay." And we stuck together. We didn't we didn't start pointing the fingers at each other, and and. Uh, that showed me that they'd learned something from last week, and that's pretty special. And learned something from other Parma Western games. Parma Western beat you guys twice last year, and neither game was particularly close, including in the playoffs, which ended your season uh, for a team that really had high hopes for making a little bit of a run. So losing to Parma Western was heartbreaking for you guys last year. So uh, you've had this game circled for a little bit while. Uh, after you lost that game in the playoffs, Parma Western, the kids had to be talk- thinking about this game and talking about this game all year long, and to see that come to fruition and to get the win, the guys have to be riding them really high about that. Yeah, absolutely. And we, it was a bitter, very bittersweet ending. We had a good season last year, but obviously, you don't like to lose the way that we did. And give Parma all the credit last year, and I know we did. They they took it to us. They were they were the better team last year, and and uh, more physical, more uh, fundamentally sound, and and they deserved all the all the wins and accolades they got last year. And we, you try to use those losses as motivation in the off season and. Our kids continue to put the work in in the weight room, and and uh, we did all the little things right last night that we needed to to win. So, I mean, 499 yards of total offense. I mean, that's fantastic against a great defensive team like Parma Western. We were nine of 11 on third down, and uh, five of seven passing actually for 71. percent I mean, Jesus Macedo continues to lead exactly the way we need him to as a senior quarterback, and the way you'd hope to. And all, with all the adversity he's faced in his three years of being our starting quarterback, I just I couldn't be more proud of the young man that he's become and the leader that he's become of our team, and uh, just that re- did a really nice thing defensively. We held them to one of six on third downs. I mean, so we got off the field on third downs and actually held them to seventy nine yards rushing. So again, once you can make a team one dimensional, you can uh, you can do some nice things. Our defense played outstanding last night. I know we gave up thirteen points, but. Uh, our second day, we were putting some pressure on him because we needed to put pressure on their quarterback, not give him time to throw. And that was part of our game plan going in was they hadn't seen pressure. We A lot of teams were dropping, trying to play, you know, six, seven guys in coverage, and we'd watch Parma pick them apart. We said, you know what, we can't give them time to throw. We have to bring pressure, and we worked on different pressures and ways of getting pressure all week. And we, we, we hit the quarterback consistently and made him think that, that when he wasn't getting hit, people were still coming. But our, you can't do that unless you can cover. And uh, Tegan Turnbull, Nehemiah Wirt, DJ Wood, Levi Carr, they, those are the, the four guys in our secondary. And it's a lonely position out there. You either give up big plays or you, or you cover your guy and make big plays. And and uh, they had some openings, but they were pretty small windows that the, the, the Parma kids had to hit. And fortunately for us, they couldn't hit them consistently all night long, and um, and so that's, th- those were big keys to our game right there. Like you said, it was a defensive battle early. Uh, Harbor Creek only led 7 nothing at halftime, and it was 7-6 to six early in the third quarter. Uh, and then you go on, a, they score coming out of the, the half, and then Chase Nichols had an 80-yard touchdown run to make it, give you guys back the lead. And um, talk about that turning point there, and that give you the momentum for the second half, and then you guys just ran, rolled from there because Chase Nichols ends up with, 200 yards rushing and 19 carries and two scores. Your running game continues to be strong. Uh, Winsauer has 79 yards and a touchdown. Jesus has 62 yards rushing and a touchdown. That big 80-yard touchdown run was huge for you guys. So, yeah, they come out of halftime, and it was big for us to stop them going into half, and we kept them from scoring and and uh, almost had another touchdown going into halftime. But either way, we were up 7 nothing and uh, needed to make a stop, and they sliced through us. I mean, they made some nice adjustments, and, and again, their number nine, Maverick Hammond, he's a, he's a terrific player, and we knew they were going to target him, and and uh, I believe it was him that got loose on the first possession of the second half, and uh, I think it was either play three or play four, and they scored and sliced right through us, and we thought, okay, yeah, here we go. It's going to be a it's going to be a heavyweight fight. We were able to, to cause them to miss the extra point, so now we're up 7-6, and, and we didn't 
we didn't fold or crumble at that point. We came right back at them and uh, give our offensive staff and our offensive line credit at halftime for making the adjustments with, with how they were attacking us defensively. And I didn't expect it to happen quite that fast because it was, it was our very first offensive play. Chase went 80 yards for a touchdown. And it was it was a couple little simple different tweaks to our blocks. And uh, But uh, Jesus, his, with his 62 yards rushing, actually, he had, he's the one who had the touchdown in the first half. And it was just a quarterback keep off the edge. As, as big and physical as we are inside, teams have to really commit 11 guys to the run. And when they do that, somebody's got to be responsible for the quarterback. And we were able to uh, use a little deception. And, and uh, Jesus ran, you know, scrambled down the sidelines for our first touchdown. And those are the kinds of things that he hasn't done in the past that he's doing now as a senior. And uh, just watching that growth was huge uh, throughout the season, watching watching him grow. And Tyler Wiesler with 26 yards. And then Minnie Winsauer, Matthew Winsauer with 79 yards rushing. But he had two big catches out of the backfield too we knew we thought we hoped we could attack the flats because of how hard they were going to come to try and make tackles in our run game and he was open twice in the flats and made two big catches that uh, kept drives alive uh, Braden Best made another big catch on a third down early in the first half to keep a drive alive and, and help us flip the field when it was uh, when it was a defensive battle early on we needed to flip the field and keep you know keep field position in our favor too so now Harbor Creek goes five five and one. They are undefeated in the league at three and zero, oh, and Parma Western falls to four and two, and they're two and one. That sets up a big game against undefeated Hastings. Hastings is defending champs in the I eight. They've uh, another team they've given you guys trouble the last couple of years. They are undefeated so far. This becomes championship week for Harbor Creek. Harbor Creek Hastings, even though it's only week seven, and a lot of times the league championship game and other sports are at the end of the year. <clears throat> This is where it all comes in, in Harbor Creek versus Hastings. The winner is probably going to be the IA League champ. How exciting is that for the team? I mean, what a, what a fantastic week. And we've got it at home. And it's going to be a packed house. I know Hastings will bring a, bring a big crowd. And, and they've really had it rolling over the past four years. And, uh, and it's just going to be a great environment. We talk a lot about how moments like this come special. And they don't, they don't come very often. And the pressure is a privilege. But, you know, you feel the pressure that it's earned because you've because you put yourself in that position. So we want to have that pressure, and we know that it's a privilege, and we're excited about that opportunity. What we do know is that at the Beaver Dome uh, for big games, the Harbor Creek crowd comes out, and we expect a big crowd for that game. Hastings coming into Harbor Creek, a huge I-8 game next Friday night. I'm sure there will be a monster crowd. Uh, the kids will be up for that, and they'll look forward to that big game for you, Coach. And congrats on the big win last night. Thanks a lot, Bill. See you next week. We will be back. Next week, talking uh, our coaches again on Coach's Corner on Saturday morning, like every week. This has been Bill Broderick of the Battle Creek Choir here on Coach's Corner on WBCK 95.3 FM. Terms and conditions apply. For full details, see unlock.com slash legal actor portrayal. Lisa, thanks for having me over. Your new kitchen is gorgeous. How did you find the money to do it? We worked with this great company, Unlock. They help you unlock the future value of your home to get the cash you need today. So it's a home equity loan? No, it's not a loan at all. There's no monthly payments and no interest charges ever. And you can use the money however you want. We were able to redo our kitchen and pay off our credit card debt. Wow, Jack and I could really use this to finally pay off our old student loan debt. How do I get started? It's easy. Just go to their website. Go to unlock.com slash radio to unlock the value in your home and get up to $500,000 in cash with no monthly payments and no interest ever. Pay off debt, improve your home, add to your retirement fund. It's up to you. Go to unlock.com slash radio right now to see if you qualify to unlock the value in your home. That's unlock.com slash radio. Go to unlock.com slash radio.